Cowardly is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honour. To him belong glory and power forever and ever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today of the last Sunday of ordinary time, the last Sunday in year A, the feast of Christ the King. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the Universe, Grant we pray that the whole creation set free from slavery may render you fitting service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I'm going to look after my flock myself and keep all of it in view. As a shepherd keeps all his flock in view when he stands up in the middle of his scattered sheep, so shall I keep my sheep in view. I shall rescue them from wherever they have been scattered during the midst and darkness. I myself will pasture my sheep, I myself will show them where to rest, it is the Lord who speaks. I shall look for the lost one, bring back the stray, bandage the wounded and make the weak strong. I shall watch over the fat and healthy, I shall be a true shepherd to them. As for you, my sheep, the Lord says this, I will judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and he goats. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. 
Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, put all of them in their proper order. Christ has the first fruits, and then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority, and power. For he must be king until he's put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. And when everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will be subject in his turn to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our father David. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He'll place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my father has blessed, take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you made me welcome. Naked and you clothed me. Sick and you visited me. In prison and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, insofar as you did this to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Next he will say to those on his left hand, Go away from me with your curse upon you to the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you never gave me food. I was thirsty and you never gave me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you never made me welcome, naked and you never clothed me, sick and in prison, and you never visited me. Then it will be their turn to ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and did not come to your help? Then he will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you neglected to do this to one of the least of these, you neglected to do it to me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, and the virtuous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. A king who had no heir to succeed him posted a notice inviting young men to come along to be interviewed for the job of king. The two qualifications for the post were love of God and love of neighbour. A poor peasant boy decided to apply. He worked hard, brought some new, bought some new clothes and headed off to the interview. He was halfway there, however, when he met a poor beggar on the road who was shivering with the cold. The young man felt so sorry for them that he exchanged his new clothes with him. 
So he was back in rags again. However, the young man felt that having come so far, he might as well finish the journey. He arrived at the palace, and despite the sneers and the jibes and the jeers of the courtiers, he was finally admitted into the presence of the king. Imagine to his amazement to see that the king was the old beggar man he had met on the road. And he was actually wearing the new clothes the young man had given him. The king got down from his throne, embraced the young man and said, Welcome, my son. You shall inherit my kingdom. We've all heard of Mother Teresa. Well, over the beds of her dying patients, she had put, This is the body of Christ. His body was broken for us on the cross. We all know that. So at Mass, when we come up to receive him in Holy Communion, I wonder, are we sufficiently aware of human brokenness in our families, in our city, and in our world at large? How we respond to the brokenness is indeed the acid test of our spirituality, of our Christianity. In helping anyone in need, it is the Christ in us who is recognizing the Christ in them. I suppose, when you come to think of it, we live in a society where the value of a person tends to be assessed on how useful or efficient they are, or how much they contribute materially to our society, little, leaving little room for all who fall short in this regard. People are judged not by what they are, but on what they have, what they do, what they produce. This is why euthanasia is becoming more appealing to the less scrupulous people by the day. A characteristic of present day culture is unchecked individually, individualism, leaving little room for the communal dimension. The weak and the vulnerable are left behind, and yet it is how we pick up on these situations that we will ultimately be judged. But in a strange sort of way, the pandemic is bringing about the best of each of us in this regard. Sometimes we have to learn the hard way, and maybe God is teaching us a hard lesson by allowing this pandemic to take place. Jesus is not impressed, however, by acts of charity done out of show. In God's kingdom, it's small unseen actions done with a good heart which speak the loudest. St. Teresa said that if we go through life without anyone noticing our good actions, so much the better. So, the question we could ask is, do we recognize Christ in the vulnerable members of our human family, the less capable people, the unborn baby, the long-term sick, those bullied at work, those bullied at school, those with mental and emotional problems. We're here in this world to help each other. And the happy, happiest people in the world are those who do precisely that. So the message of this, which is the last Sunday of the liturgical year, is probably the most important. Those who will stand at the Lord's right hand side on the day of judgment will be the ones who have taken today's gospel seriously and acted accordingly. They shall inherit the kingdom.
Christ is the head of the body of the church, and we are members of that body, gathered to pray in his name. Let us pray that kingdom values may permeate everything we do, especially in our outreach to the poor and vulnerable people of our day. May we see the image of Christ in those who suffer. Lord, hear us. God's kingdom is one of truth. Let us pray that men and women of goodwill may always stand up for the truth of the gospel, especially in the face of opposition. Lord, hear us. God's kingdom is one of justice. Let us pray that the church may be at the forefront of work and for justice in our world, especially in areas where the rights of others have been trampled underfoot. Lord, Heroes. We pray for the parish sick. May they be healed and at peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who died recently, especially Mary Shannon, and all whose anniversaries we recall today and in the week ahead. May eternal life be theirs. Lord, hear us. We pray to Mary, our Heavenly Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Let us pause now and pray for our own intentions. The healing prayer. Mercy of God, come to the help of your people. Be our shelter in this time of peril and strengthen the bonds of our community. Bring healing to all who suffer the ravages of disease and assist those who skill and art to put an end to this affliction. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as an eternal priest and king of all creation, 
so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of you an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew call, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The Lord sits as King forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Let us pray. 
Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Master and the Going Peace.